In a city of Washington, violence, city leaders are called on to take action, but residents say they're seeing very little that would turn the tide of this crisis. Baltimore's violence continues to outpace last year. 2021 will likely surpass 300 homicides for the seventh year in a row. Bloodshed that continues in Baltimore while leaders are not facing it head on. Um, Fox 45 News' is Mackenzie Frost is live with the questions that Mayor Scott is not answering about saving lives today. Yeah, Maxine and Rion, Baltimore nearing 200 homicides this year. In other cities across the country seeing similar surge in violence. Mayors are coming out raising red flags, but it's not quite the same here in Baltimore. Baltimore's bloodshed continues almost every day. 192 people dead, another 383 injured in shootings. Both statistics up compared to last year. Mayor Brandon Scott speaking out this week after a 64-year-old man was shot and killed over a scooter. It's a true tragedy, and I've already talked to the police commissioner about making sure that we do as we have been doing at a, at a high clip this year and bringing those people into justice. But no news conference called by the mayor. City council taking a summer break. you taking time off and... It's like you're not being touched by the problems that we've experienced. What makes it different? Because the more they meet, the more they can deci make decisions and stuff. In cities across the country, leaders addressing the dangerous trend. Atlanta. When our communities aren't safe or when they don't feel safe, nothing else really matters. Chicago. No one thinks that a single act of violence is ever acceptable, least of all me. Washington, D.C. Too many people are willing to use guns. In New York City, out with a new crime strategy less than 24 hours after a June shooting in Times Square. We're going to be adding additional officers and additional measures to make it safer. Back in Baltimore, we sent Mayor Brandon Scott's office questions, asking, will the mayor hold a news conference to address the violence? If so, when? The problem getting big enough for Baltimore Police Commissioner Michael Harrison to ask the federal government for help. The ask is for federal agents to come help us. Working alongside the already short-staffed BPD to solve homicides and prevent even more. In today's federal consent decree hearing, Commissioner Harrison says that there is a crime plan, but the details of that would have to come from the mayor's office. And so far, we haven't seen any. But what about the timing of this announcement? Is it too little, too late? Keith Daniels spoke to city residents ahead of tomorrow's events. Keith, what did you learn? Well, Maxine, we spoke to a man who says he's lived in Baltimore for more than 50 years. This is home. It's a city he loves, but now fears. Baltimore needs help. Clifton Speller speaking from his front porch. It's not getting bad. It's getting worse. About Baltimore's bloodshed. Am I afraid for my life? Yeah. A homicide happened Tuesday afternoon just a few doors down from Speller's home on Kennedy Avenue. A young man gunned down. Deadly violence so close to home. Speller fears a stray bullet could find him. I get up in the morning at 2 o'clock in the morning to go to work. I'm like looking, ducking, because you never know where it's going to come from. The gun violence continues almost every day, with more than 190 people dead, more than 380 people injured in shootings so far this year. Both statistics up compared to last year. People getting killed for no reason, getting robbed for no reason. So what is the city's crime plan? Mayor Brandon Scott finally announcing today that tomorrow, he intends to roll out what he calls a comprehensive violence prevention plan, a public safety strategy that includes a public health approach and community engagement. The timing of Scott's news conference follows other big city mayors, including New York City, out with a new crime strategy less than 24 hours after a June shooting in Times Square. We're going to be adding additional officers and additional measures to make it safer, to make it better. And we're announcing today the Times Square Safety Action Plan. Fox 45 has pressed Scott for weeks, asking him about his crime plan, even during one of his recent neighborhood walks. The so crime walks, how does this help break down or fight the crime when we're approaching a milestone of homicides in the city? We have to understand again, Keith, that this is one part of this. The crime problem getting big enough. The mayor's announcement comes on the same day. Baltimore Police Commissioner Michael Harrison talked about a request to the federal government 
for help. I don't want to go too far, but the ask is for federal agents to come help us. Certainly, police officers will answer the citizens' calls for service on patrol. But I think what the bigger picture meant is federal agents on the streets of Baltimore. Well, the commissioner's statement today just doubles down on a recent request Mayor Brandon Scott said he made when he was visiting the White House last month. There's no timeline or when or if this request will be approved. The basis in Baltimore streets are turning into war zones. Gun battles playing out in neighborhoods, often taking lives and injuring even more. In tonight's Operation Crime and Justice, Dan Lamparello looks at the impact that that level of violence is having and how those responding are being trained for the battlefield Baltimore has become. There's no doubt the current level of gun violence in Baltimore is unprecedented. Hundreds of people killed each year and even more surviving being shot. Uncontrolled combat that's led those treating the victims to have to adapt in order to save lives. There are scenes that mirror a battlefield. Bullet casings litter the ground as blood is cleaned from the street. A striking picture to an age old problem as gun violence ravages the city of Baltimore. It's a war zone. It's a war zone. This is war. Somebody's not going to live tonight. Rodney Hudson is a pastor in West Baltimore, a member of Act Now, and a veteran who says what's playing out on these streets is unimaginable. Even being uh, in the army during that Gulf War time did not prepare you for what we are experiencing now in the murders in this city. Per capita, Baltimore has a murder rate higher than many third world countries as lives are taken almost daily. We've had more people killed in Baltimore City the last 10 years than we've had in the years of Afghanistan, American troops dying. This is the combat zone. A battle that's forced those on the front lines of this fight to adapt and try to save as many lives as they can. Baltimore police body camera footage showing an officer rendering aid to a man who was shot on the streets of downtown earlier this year. The officer using pads and even a tourniquet to stop the bleeding before an ambulance arrives. It's gonna hurt a little bit, but I'm gonna put pressure on The man who was shot survived, something police credit to new basic medical training for city officers, similar to what soldiers receive before heading to battle. Gunshot wounds are a whole spectrum of injuries. Dr. Thomas Scalia is the physician in chief at Shock Trauma. And while he and fellow doctors have been credited with saving many victims of Baltimore's violence, he says the training officers and even paramedics are receiving to treat gunshot victims before they arrive at the ER has been crucial. We get people that make it to the hospital that may not make it to the hospital other places. And so people who would be dead in the field get to the hospital here and um, that gives us a chance to save them. Adapting to save lives amid unprecedented violence. What we need right now is real life boots on the ground. Showing more needs to be done to prevent this battle from escalating even further. So life-saving measures are no longer needed. You think we have violence now? Let's see what it's gonna be like a year from now when no one acts. While Baltimore has seen more than 300 homicides for six years in a row, experts say without that medical training in the field and our world-class hospitals, that number would likely be even higher.